Stop trying to move. You're dying. I may have your cure, but I'm not going to lie. This will hurt. In her original alignment, Lana Benico was a female human who fought for the Sith Empire. In addition to being wealthy, her parents were well known in the Sith capital, Dromund Kars. By Imperial law, Lana was required to become proficient in the ways of the dark side when she showed signs of Force sensitivity. Upon being taken to Korriban, she would face the trials of the Sith Academy with other potential acolytes. As a matter of fact, she was even educated by Overseer Harkin. Now, I believe it's time for another demonstration. Gur, step forward. Yes, Overseer. Fon, kill him. With pleasure, Overseer. Let Gur be an example to you. It was even Lana who completed a trial that required her to retrieve the helmet of Tulak Horde. Following her graduation from Korriban, Lana gained a reputation as a highly capable member of the Sith. At a young age, Lana participated in a small skirmish between Republic and Imperial troops during the Treaty of Coruscant. Those events occurred during her apprenticeship as a Sith on Hoth. Lana cut off the hand of her superior at the time in order to save her own troops and survive. This was because her superior wanted to keep fighting, as Lana was aware everyone would die if they don't cease fire. As a result of her actions, everyone went home that day. This is true for even the Republic soldiers. Lana's personality was not one of ruthlessness or savagery. Despite being recruited and trained by the Sith, she did not adhere to all of their ideals. Lana even condoned peaceful transactions with other people and was more than open to learning new avenues of the Force. There have not been many questions posed to Lana about this from within the Sith Empire, nor was this something normally seen among the Sith themselves. In other words, it would appear that they were more than willing to let her find her own path. As a result of that, or because of the ongoing war, many Sith were able to delve into topics they otherwise would not have been able to. As Lana sought more experience on the battlefield, she requested stationing with Darth Arcus. Joining the sphere of military offense would certainly satisfy her needs. Darth Arcus, who was the leader of the sphere of military offense, accepted this request after seeing Lana's skill not only with the Force, but also with initiative and cunning. However, Lana discovers a conspiracy that implicates her superior, Darth Arcus, to be a traitor and working with the Republic. Darth Arcus wasn't entirely forthcoming about his reasons for invading the Jedi Temple. Not even with me. He was after a very specific item. An artifact. I think... I think the Empire's in terrible danger. I'm used to offering my counsel to others. Now I turn to you for yours, Dark Lord. Will you help me? When she investigates this further, she finds small clues that lead to Manan. While on the planet Manan, Lana was able to make allies with a Republic SIS agent named Ferron Shan, who had also similarly discerned this plot from his side within the Republic. As such, that made everyone have a mutual goal. An alliance was beneficial. After chasing her gut feeling, Lana discovers that Darth Arcus had been working with a Republic colonel for the sake of some secret cult. The breadcrumb trail she followed led right to Rakata Pram and exposed the Revanite group and even Revan himself. As important as Arcus and Derek were to the cause, their deaths won't stop us. They will even slow us down. That voice. I've heard it before. It's Revan. <laughs> I almost had the infinite army I wanted so badly, but even without them, I have enough. Darth Arcus had stated he was going to recruit Lana into the Revanites, as she was a valuable asset. However, Arcus declared that Lana Benica had changed the moment Lana met the player character of Star Wars The Old Republic. The player then kills Arcus and Darok on Rakata, 
However, this backfires when Revenite spies and infiltrators start popping up. These spies attempt to paint Lana Benika the bad guy for allegedly killing Darth Arcus. Lana and Feron work on ways to expose Revan and his secret cult to the galaxy, and they start on the planet Rishi. After being able to uncover a connection between local gangs of Rishi and the Revanites, Lana reaches out to her contact, which is the player character. Lana Benico. Dark Lord, an honour as ever. If we're to succeed here, we'll need to cooperate a great deal. I suggest we don't antagonise one another. Together, they were able to regroup and overpower the gangs of Rishi to force their benefactor out of hiding. Lana came up with a plan to get Theron captured purposely by the Revenites so that they can gain information. However, she didn't tell Theron that that was the plan and this caused a rift in trust between them. Don't you teach your people anything, Lana? Agent, compose yourself. While Darth Mar and I have reached an accord, many of those under our command obviously don't share our sense of commitment. Despite being allies with Theron, Lana was more than willing to get the job done than any other. She knew how to put duty, doing the right thing, over anything else, even if that sometimes meant getting your allies kidnapped for the sake of gathering intel. After Theron was rescued, the team and Lana were able to expose a plot to resurrect the Emperor on Revan's behalf. Darth Maul, you have traitors in your fleet. Scores of them, acting under orders from Revan. Revan is alive. He wants you to destroy each other up there. Finally, an open line. Grandmaster Sean, it appears we have been set upon each other by your ancestor. Revan intended to lure the Emperor out of hiding on Yavin 4, so that he could destroy him once and for all. But because of Lana's actions and discoveries, these facts were brought to Darth Ma and Satil Shan, who then arranged a temporary truce, so that they may deal with the Revanite threat. We're taking measures to detain the traitors among us. As are we. Given the nature of the threat, I suggest we speak in person. Very well. A neutral location. There's a pirate town on Rishi. My team will send the coordinates. That will do. This became a part of history, a moment that would be remembered for a long time. The Republic and Empire had joined forces to take down a mutual enemy. Lana Benico, along with her team, were at the forefront of this event. This would establish an even higher level of reputation across the galaxy for Lana. Once the Revanite threat was extinguished, Darth Maar personally appointed Lana Benico as the new head of Sith Intelligence. You are to be commended, of course, but it was Lana Benico's guile and intellect that made your participation at all possible. That is why I have placed Lana in charge of Sith Intelligence. This was an incredible honour for Lana. The only thing that could have beaten it would have been a seat on the Dark Council itself. However, Lana was never one for titles, and Sith Intelligence suited her more than adequately. In the following weeks, Lana Benico had been positioned on the planet Xyost, which is where they suspected their former Emperor had fled to. However, soon after the Emperor started possessing and controlling large pockets of people across the planet's surface, which led to all-out conflict and chaos. Lana had no choice but to request a player character's aid on Xyost. Eventually, more reinforcements showed up to Xyost, but it was all done in vain. The former Sith Emperor, Darth Vitiate, had once again consumed an entire world. Luckily, Lana and her team were not on the surface when this disaster happened, 
Lana knew full well that she could not single-handedly oppose someone like the Emperor, so she devoted herself to aiding the player character as a companion in the times to come. <laughs> Lana Benico has been silently working behind the scenes for the benefit of opposing the Eternal Empire, who had now five years ago taken the galaxy by force. The Empire and Republic were both beaten into submission by Arkan, the son of the immortal Emperor Valkorion. During the five year gap, Lana had been building relationships with allies and keeping the rebellion alive. She had teamed up with the likes of Koth Fortina and that to this day, Theron Shan. Lana had personally conducted a plan to rescue the player character from Carbonite Prison and the custody of the Eternal Empire. Once they are reunited, Lana brings them up to speed and the long, gruelling fight against Arkan begins. If you want to learn everything about Arkan, Valkorion and everyone else in the family, be sure to check out my Explained series as we cover a lot of the Old Republic lore. Lana Benica now spends her time aiding the Outlander also known as the player character, in their fight against Arkan. She will accept a romance if you choose to chase one with her, regardless of gender or species. At this point in time, Lana's character begins to shift their focus. She goes from a duty-fulfilling Sith Lord to a now loyalist of the Outlander. Lana completely diverts herself and her skills to the newly formed Alliance. She had already explained that she does not think much to titles, so chasing some naive ambition was off the table for her. Serving the Alliance commander was now her only mission. After the defeat of Valkorion and his children, Lana further proved her loyalty by remaining by the player's side even after deciding to dissolve the Alliance and or return to the Republic or Empire. It would be more than fair to say that Lana no longer walked the path of your average Sith Lord. While she still believed in the fundamental truths behind Sith teachings, such as using your anger to fuel your power, she was becoming more and more open to learning more about the Force and even the Jedi. Lana could be seen conversing with Jedi Master Nos Jiral about philosophy, which again is not something you see your average Sith Lord doing. Lana Benico has continued to be loyal and support the player character of Star Wars The Old Republic, and her tale is yet to come to an end within the current storyline. So for now, Lana Benico is a very well-known Sith Lord, who sits as basically the right hand to the most powerful person in the galaxy, the player. However, I have my suspicions that Lana is yet to betray us. In the most recent story events of Legacy of the Sith, it would seem a new mysterious Sith has been possibly lurking in the shadows. Darth Null. My suspicions would have me believe that Lana Benica is quite possibly this Darth Null character, or connected to them in some way. Lana has been an anomaly for players as she plays one of, if not, the most important companion role in the entire game right now. You cannot choose, no matter what, to dismiss Lana or not involve her in the next big thing. Lana is forced upon you like a main character. Does Lana Benico have anything to do with Darth Null? Or perhaps she really is just an unusual Sith Lord? Subscribe to the channel so you can find out what happens in the end as we will be making a follow-up video when that happens. Please consider supporting us on Patreon, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.